rainwater. It's a natural event which affects our environment many times a year. Most of us take it for granted and don't realize the importance of storm water management. Cities are covered with a combination of concrete, asphalt, and buildings leaving very few areas where water can seep into the ground. Rainwater in downtown areas needs somewhere to go. Developers of cities realized this and eventually built stormwater systems to manage the flow of excess water. Well, it used to be called, in, in, back in the late 1800s, there was a common enemy doctrine that, that uh, uh, stormwater was considered a common enemy of everybody, up, upstream landowners and downstream, so everybody was going to have to deal with it. And so it was something that we just tried to get, especially in urban areas, uh, we'd try to put it into streams, put it all underground, and, and put it out of sight, out of mind, uh, put it where, you know, we don't have to think about it, where people can't see it. But, uh, you know, when, when things start to fail, then, then it becomes obvious that we do need to think about it. And there, there does need to be maintenance on our system if you don't put some money into it all the way along, just like maintaining your house. If you don't maintain your house, it's going to fall down. If you don't maintain our infrastructure, it's all going to fall down. Yeah, the City of Columbia Stormwater Utility has over a million feet of, of stormwater infrastructure in the ground today. I said a lot of it is 50, 60 years old and it's at the end of its design life. It's, it needs to be replaced. When stormwater pipes fail, it makes the job of our maintenance crews more difficult because instead of doing regular maintenance on our stormwater systems, they have to go into crisis mode and address the issues that, that come up that are, that are most needy. And so they can't get around to the little problems that other people may be having around town. They have to address the issue that's most pressing and the largest safety concern. So if we can address some of these issues ahead of time, if we know a lot of the systems that are um, that need to be improved, that need to be fixed, but it's having the resources to make that happen. If we can get those things fixed, then we don't have to go into crisis mode when things fail at the last minute. You know, failing pipes uh, a lot of times produce potholes in roads. Um, they also, because we have to work on them so much, it seems like there are more uh, work zones scattered around town, more disruptions to transportation. Um, in people's backyards, you know, when these things fail in somebody's backyard, we can't always wait to do things in a way that is just so in somebody's backyard, you know, that makes everything all nice. Um, we have to get in and fix it and fix it fast and um, that can be a huge disruption to a neighborhood. A lot of people ask me why we don't just extend pipes all the way through the city, all the way from the, the top of the watershed on all the way down to uh, the discharge point at a stream or a lake, wherever it comes out. Uh, and at one time that was kind of the philosophy that we should do that, but we've realized that uh, by doing that, that dumps a lot more water into streams at one time, so it increases the flash flooding when we have a big storm. If we let the water come out and run over the top of the ground every once in a while, uh, that lets some of the water soak in, slows it down because it can spread out outside the pipe and uh, helps reduce the flooding in the, in the streams. Um, so that's, that's why we don't put all the water in the pipe and, and pipe it all down to, to the streams. Also, we design our stormwater systems for what you might call an average storm size and every once in a while, this last year, quite a few times we've had storms that are quite a bit larger than that average size. And so the pipes don't handle all that water, so we have to have an overflow capacity. And uh, so that means some of the water is going to flow over the top of the ground too, not just in the pipes. Stormwater a lot of times is taken for granted. Uh, it affects uh, people's, uh, well let's say for instance uh, homeowners, uh, their, uh, uh, just their landscaping and uh, property itself, uh, the value. Uh, if the water doesn't drain properly, it could uh, decrease the value, also could uh, damage the home uh, just to excessive moisture. And, and uh, I think uh, if it's done properly, it can be an aesthetic value as well. You know, it, it could be a nice, nice stream and, and uh, could be a positive thing. Any new development uh, can increase runoff. 
uh, our current stormwater ordinances are trying to address that. Uh, but for properties that were built in the 50s and 60s, the philosophies were a little different. Uh, the design was a little different. It's a constantly evolving field. Um, the more we learn and the more we understand about how our development uh, affects runoff, um, how it affects uh, our environment, how it affects uh, the ecosystem, the more we can put into place measures to protect our environment and protect our ecosystems that are important to us because that's what makes Columbia a nice place to be. Uh, it looks like through downtown Columbia as areas developed, they took a, an open stream that uh, was maybe part of Flat Branch, just kind of closed it in and, and then uh, in some cases paved over the top of it. And so that, you know, that's been there for a long time and that, that's starting to fail now. So we've, we've got a, uh, you know, some systems are in pretty good shape, some that are in not so good shape and there's a lot of systems that we haven't really looked at for quite a while. Is this um, infrastructure problem we're faced with, is it just something that's, that's unique to Columbia? And the answer is no. Um, if you look across even the state of Missouri, if you go start in Kansas City, or you go up to St. Joe, or you look at St. Louis, um, all those cities are facing infrastructure problems. And the city of Springfield included, um, the city of Kansas City, St. Joe, and St. Louis have, have combined sewers where the, where the sanitary sewer system and the stormwater system are, are one system. So they're, they're, they're combined or they're mixed. The city of Columbia is a little bit different and we do not have combined sewers, which puts us in a better position um, as far as regulations, but we still have the same issues that the bigger cities with infrastructure failing. You have to look at, there are systems that were constructed in the 1920s, 1930s, uh, brick archways that go under Providence Road, and then you get into the 50s and 60s when we put in hundreds and hundreds, thousands of feet of corrugated metal pipe. The life expectancy of corrugated metal pipe was probably 40 to 50 years at the time. Well, the time's up it's time to replace those pipes uh, and trying to prioritize those resources with with the budget that the city has is difficult um, and unfortunately we have to do the most serious ones only but there's many many more pipes around town that need to be replaced failing stormwater systems can affect other infrastructure um, by impacting gas lines uh, impacting water lines, electrical lines, um, roadways. Uh, when those pipes and things fail, water water is a very powerful, powerful source of energy. And uh, if it's not going through our systems, then it's affecting other things. It's eroding hillsides. It's eroding stream banks. Uh, probably the biggest thing it affects is our sanitary sewers. As far as preventing this from happening again, I mean, we find ourselves in a very tough spot right now in that a whole bunch of stuff, you know, those, those, uh, those little booms that Columbia had back in the 60s and the 70s and, and the 80s, I guess, to a certain extent, those little housing booms and growth spurts and everything, we've got a lot of infrastructure from, from those times that's failing, and it's failing in a boom kind of way. I guess it would be the reverse of a boom. Um, and that a whole bunch of that pipe is failing at the same time, and that's a real challenge for us. So what we want to do to prevent that situation from happening where a whole bunch of stuff goes all at once is to, again, assign a lifespan to every single piece of infrastructure we have and to be ready, you know, from 30 years out. 30 years from when that piece of infrastructure is scheduled to fail or need replacement that we'll know to start, you know, uh, increasing our budget or whatever we need to do to get the money together to stay ahead of this problem. Stormwater systems tend to be, in general, um, very expensive to fix just because they're usually a, a very large pipe or a very large concrete structure. Um, they're sized 
to take on a um, certain um, size storm, whether it be a 10 year storm or a 100 year storm. And uh, so compared to, I would say, a, a, a water line or a sanitary sewer line, the stormwater pipes are much, much bigger. Thus, they tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, the good thing is, is that compared to, say, their sanitary sewer system, we, have, we don't have as much stormwater system in, in place. But a lot of what we do have is old. It's 50, 60 years old, and it's due to be replaced. So uh, we haven't put an exact price tag to it, but it is going to be a big, big item. Let's say that we put in a, a pipe that's expected to last for 70 years. Well, in 65 years, it starts throwing up a, a little flag whenever anybody looks on their computer screen. It starts turning a certain color or something to alert us to the fact that we need to step up our inspections of that pipe. We need to do them more often because this pipe is getting near the end of its lifespan. At the same time, if we know that a certain piece of pipe is supposed to last, last 70 years, well, we need to start saving money right now to replace that piece of pipe at the end of 70 years, or at least make sure that we have a money stream that is able, you know, capable of allowing us to replace the infrastructure that will be at the end of its lifespan at that time. The utility was formed in 1993, and it was formed through a through a a bond issue, a a, a ballot issue. It's the voters of Columbia passed. And I believe it was in April '93, um, a ballot that authorized the city to to set up a utility, to set uh, stormwater utility fees, um, and we have not gone back to the voters since '93 to to raise those rates, to raise the stormwater fees that the residents and the commercial businesses here in Columbia pay. So what we're embarking on is we've hired a consultant to perform a cost of service study to show um, or to determine how much revenue the utility needs to be generating on an annual basis compared to what we're generating now. And then with that information, we're hoping to take information to our city council and gain authorization to go back to the voters to seek a rate increase that would generate the amount of revenue that we need from this point moving forward to, to fix our, our infrastructure that needs to be fixed and um, then and the plan is, is as, move, as we move forward, then we would, we would uh, not wait 17 years to do it again. We'll, we'll come up with a, a fairly routine schedule, whether it's five years, seven years, ten years, to go back to the voters to, to ask for rate increases to keep up with, keep up with our system. Basically, it's, uh, it's a huge um, safety hazard, for one thing. Um, if, uh, if a pipe collapses, uh, the, the nightmare that we always envision that we really fear is that a pipe collapses in the middle of the night. Somebody driving along on that road doesn't notice, has no way of knowing that the road has uh, collapsed in front of them and if they drive into it at 30 miles an hour, it doesn't take much of, a, of a, uh, an indentation in the road um, to produce disastrous results. Thank you.